<laughs> I got you. I got the right. energy. I got the so energy. we get, we're gonna do an official introduction and let people know what's going on, Brian, or we're we just go. gonna it's jump working. straight yeah, into all right. this. <laughs> we are back. We took a hiatus last week because you had your little drum fill in solo going on. We had a little holiday yeah, weekend going it was on. A, it was a holiday weekend, yeah. Yeah, I got and to play some drums. Get to play some I'm, drums, which was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, I'm not a drummer, but from my Facebook profile, I think I was. That's all I ever do in my, in my spare time. <laughs> What's a drummer? Always it's a drummer. your passion. That's what happens. It, it's so much fun. Like, I played for four hours the other day. I made 50 bucks. I'm like, yeah, it's a good thing I'm doing this for yeah, fun, yeah, yeah. not for money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So, hey, at least anyway. you got 50 bucks. Some people play for four hours and don't get nothing. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. It's really, it's really not about the money at this point. I do it, I do it purely for the fun and the enjoyment and the engagement. And you know, I, I had my time as a professional drummer. I did very, very well at it. But you know, I've got other skill sets now that aren't quite as uh, punishing on my body. Drumming is is very physical, but that's not what we came to talk yeah. about. So, uh, Brian, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Why don't you tell everybody what we're doing on our Monday nights? So and uh, intru introduce our guest Wiley, who has very kindly agreed to come and take some time out of his evening to we talk to us. You don't have to pay him that much to come on either. <laughs> fifty bucks. Just buy me 50 dinner. Bucks, yeah, 50. we're gonna <laughs> buy, buy me some dinner. Steak and on Wednesday, yeah. Um, so we are back Monday nights. Get some fire live with uh, me and Sam and our always special guest tonight, Wiley, the Mind Ninja himself. Uh, we are doing this every Monday night, eight thirty Eastern time, to try and uh, add some value to your lives and. So you get to know us and get to know some of our friends in this uh, Apex community here that are influencers and making a difference in the world. And uh, we just like to share some, some love with everybody. Um, we know Sam's the surgeon, small business surgeon. I'm the We Ride at Dawn guy. So you see me posting my rides every morning. And uh, Wiley's going to ninja our minds tonight. Something like that. I hope he does. He's, 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 like, he's like this little... Uh... This little knife that gets in and just starts, yeah, yeah. starts winkling stuff out of people. He's really, really good at it. Um, how did you get the nickname the Mind Ninja, Wiley? Where did that come from, mate? I showed up at an Apex Entrepreneur event, and it, I said, I'm a fucking Mind Ninja, and I <laughs> went with it. It was just a decision at that point. I've only been, uh, actually, my business I relaunched start of June, so that was in July. So I hadn't really come up with a title, and then that one just fit, and I'm like, man, this is fun. I like this, so I just run with it. So what what would you say like the core of your business is then? The core? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. the The mind ninja. The mind ninja. Basically, the thought behind the mind ninja is, I go in and covertly cut out all the crap that you're holding on to, ask questions to get you aware of. The things that are holding you back so that you can destroy and, and and just move forward because most people that I've talked to they once they realize what it is that they is holding them back they they've got all the tools to solve it's just when it's outside of awareness we're, we're unsure and we go into the the self critique the self the stuck state of mm. I don't know what's going on I don't know this the minute you know you're like That was easy. There you go. All right. <laughs> you pull out the easy button because you have all the resourcefulness to solve your stuff when you know what you need to solve. But when it's stuck outside of the awareness, it's 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 way bigger than it really is. And that's the, the thing is, is biggest fears are just that. that. We've propagated it. We've created more and more and more compounded it and said it's, it's got to be bigger than it really is. And then all the solutions that are really easy, we're like, no, it can't be that simple. So we, we delete those answers because it's like, no, nah, it can't be that easy. No, nah, it can't be that easy. I've got to really suffer and I have to do all this stuff because early in life, a lot of us, me included, we're taught you have to work hard for your money. So if I have something come easily and effortlessly, it's like, okay, where's the hard part? Mm -hmm. I haven't earned this money yet. Where's my hard part coming? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Brian, still yeah, I still struggle. That I big still question, struggle with right? That. Would you rather yeah. have twenty millions you've worked for, a hundred million dollars cash given to you? And he's like, the stuff I've earned, the twenty million. He's like, you're stupid. Take the hundred million and go mm -hmm. make another twenty million working hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
it's just we make things difficult because that's what we've been trained since childhood. Our parents had it difficult, their parents had it difficult, and it's just been compounding. And until we break the cycle and decide, you know what? It's okay if it comes easily because I love it and I'm doing that. I'm in flow. I mean, one of my favorite mentors inside of the Apex group is Stacey Rasky because her whole synopsis is let's be in flow. I'm going to be influential. Mm -hmm. And the easier I make it on myself, the more abundance flows to me. Why? Because I'm having fun. And when we're having fun, more things happen when you're enjoying it's yourself. Truth. It's the truth. I do like enjoying myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Too much. Well, no. Wiley, how did. All right. Let's back up. I've enjoyed myself too much many times. <laughs> I'm now on a much boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> I'm, I'm now four years and four months into sobriety. So God bless, bro. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, anyway, <laughs> what, how how in the fuck did you discover that you could do something like this? Because when I'm when I'm thinking of a business plan, when I'm thinking of a career path or something, I'm not thinking, you know what, I'm gonna get in people's heads and just unfuck their heads. How did you discover that this was a talent of yours, man? Because this is really well, interesting to me. It's not just a talent. It's I, I've wanted to be a motivational speaker, speaker since I was in high school. Forgive me, a talent and a skill set. Um, yeah, right. skill sets are definitely earned. Definitely well, the talent is once you discover the skill set, you see you have a knack for it, and you're really good mm -hmm. at it. You become definitely. the prodigy. That's awesome. But you don't know that until you start getting the skill set. It's like when you started drumming, you didn't know you were awesome until you're like, oh man, I got this. <laughs> right? I still do that, dude. I still do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was in high school, um, I was in a couple of clubs that we went and, and had motivational speakers. And I just absolutely loved the energy I felt after I learned those lessons and started questioning things and realized that there was more to life than just the school and all that stuff. And it took me a while to get on the right path. But the one that really guided my path early on was Tony Robbins. Because mm. he is the original... Um, poster oh, child of yeah. neuro linguistics programming which is what i use hold on I'm trying he to is... fix wiley here because i can hear him but i'm being told that people can't hear him so hold on give me a second yeah i hear him uh, i hear him fine keep talking Wiley. i will keep talking and having a lot of fun but tony robbins is my inspiration um and i've set the goal now that he started slowing down i gotta pass him there you go. It is. It's possible now. Like I'll be it. bigger than Tony Robbins, change more lives than Tony Robbins because I have this goal of really helping people realize that it really is that easy. We can get rid of imposter syndrome just by changing the voice inside our heads. We have that control. We can make it sound like a politician that we don't trust. And the minute you make that negative voice sound like someone you don't trust, you don't take its advice anymore. Talk about like, it all the time, right? You wouldn't talk to your your friends the way you talk to yourself. I can't. I won't. Oh. You know, I'm stupid. I'm fat. And we all do that to ourselves. And we and believe it. We believe That's the it. thing is, is, we are our most powerful yeah. critic, and we believe it more deeply than anything anyone else says. That's and true. once we start realizing that, you know what, I am better than that, and why don't I shift that to the stuff that I'm good at, the things that magnify me, and how I am awesome, and shifting that mindset personally. Get a recording of yourself saying you are awesome and, and do some I am statements. I am incredible. I am this. And then listen to it every night or every morning Positive while simple. you're doing yeah. some stretches in that. And, and it's you telling yourself how amazing you are. You don't need Chris Helmsworth to tell you you're amazing. As great as his voice is, he's not. Yeah. If you saw that little post he put up for was it some company had him say, you are amazing. You are incredible. And, and that Aussie accent, I mean, we got Sam, I mean, he could do that for us. <laughs> he could do the fun accent. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to get your audio to come on, Wiley. It's coming through my headphones. It's not coming through the streaming software. So the guys on the chat are missing it. And um, we'll see on, uh, the, the problem is, I've got all my audio properties set where they should be. I so we're going to do an official introduction and let people know what's going on, Brian. Or yeah, I'm getting Wiley on my. Uh, uh, my personal stream yeah it's it's coming through it's coming on my personal stream it's the it's the streaming software to the group that it's not running yeah, on so y'all keep talking i'm gonna i'm gonna play around back here Ent entourage has just too much power in there that it's like is that what it is if we, if we give them all these secrets it's just gonna blow up and the world is gonna go oh we're not ready for this <laughs> and we'll be able to end 
masking and all that stuff because we're just too awesome. That's it. That's and, it. And, uh, I mean, I'd like to end that. Uh, right? Who wouldn't? Oh. Still, people drive around with a mask on by themselves in the car. I don't get it. But Who the fuck does that? I, I saw someone <laughs> with a mask on a motorcycle. <laughs> Well, that you suck up dirt as you drive it around, so that I've seen the bandana, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that's still, a no, he had the helmet on and then the mask underneath it. Oh, yeah, no, that's kind of weird. I've seen, like, the I, bandana so you're not eating bugs, you know. I, I, I can understand that kind of stuff, but just. Yeah, yeah. They, they've got the, I, I, lo- I love the meme where somebody put the new seatbelts where you just move a bowl where it's just strapped over yourself and then you can just get out and walk because <laughs> it's really as effective. Yeah, yeah, definitely, but, definitely. Yeah. No, 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 no thoughts here on that kind of stuff. No, no, we're, we're apolitical, <laughs> somewhat. Okay, I got it. You got it. It's working. That was deep in the settings. That should be it. Good yeah. lord, Wiley, so talk about it. Can you hear me now? God, yeah. damn. no one can silence the mind ninja. Nobody. <laughs> yeah. We talked about uh, when we were on with Mike about uh, fear, false that was evidence easy. appearing real. It wasn't easy. That was. <laughs> that was hard. These settings are brutal, man. I got mine actually well, working for the, I got mine working. Yours isn't working. God, that, that, but they're, they're all on the recording. Um, well, so once you recorded. decide, you make it, it just, happen. That's what we're it was doing. just the streaming settings. God, that, yeah. that's such a, like, there's Where's so Kyle? many little buttons and shit. <laughs> Kyle, we don't, Where's Kyle? I, Kyle is not here. Kyle! I, I did that. I fixed that. There we go. Um, hey, at least our, it wasn't Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> we could kill him. Right? We could kill Kenny. Oh, God. Don't you dare kill Kyle. I need him. I need him. <laughs> All right. Never so, Kyle. with our apologies for that, and it's just on the one stream to uh, uh, Entourage. All the other streams are working and everything. I have no idea. Um, I was oh. just. Yeah, right. Here we are. Got you guys now. So are there again. any questions in the Entourage? We or are we just having some yeah, fun? Yeah, they all say, why can't we fucking hear Wiley? You can hear me now. Now ask <laughs> you me now? questions. It's like the Verizon guy, you know? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah. Got you. But yeah, so Tony Robbins um, set the way. I, I, I watched his late night um, seminars on the Unleash the Power Within, the, the, that, that tape set, listened to that, and just loved all of the information that was coming there and um, manifested that eventually I'd get that. And about six years ago, I was in a, a multi level network marketing company. Uh, organization and got introduced to a guy who actually trains the skill set of neurolinguistics programming timeline therapy and hypnotherapy and uh, I said uh, all right I'm in you have to convince my at then time the my now ex-wife but my wife at the time that it's that that I need that training so he went in told her all the things that we could do she signed the check because it's a partnership you got to both be in on things like that yeah. I believe and it was it was amazing. Did the first level of training while I was there. Actually, I had some back pain. I was I worked at Walmart distribution loading trucks. Twisted my back at one point and really messed it up. And he came over, talked to me for five minutes, and all of a sudden the pain went away. And I'm like, what the heck is this voodoo hoodoo? And he's like, oh, that's in my next level of training. Son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> so I did the next level of training. Um, so I, I got the master practitioner. It's went fine. deep in values, how to how to actually change our values at the unconscious level so that we can get what we want because motivation is a lie. If you're not motivated to do things, you're doing what you value. Our core values are so important and our unconscious core values are even more important because they drive our actions. So started researching that a bit and uh, they said, oh, by the way, there's one more level of training and this one will install 32 behaviors at your unconscious level where if you ever get up on stage you'll just absolutely be the man and I'm like uh yes please mm-hmm. and went and did that training and have just had a blast with it and there's so much fun I mean just noticing things like one of my favorite uh, comedy guys is Jim Gaffigan and if you mm-hmm. watch anytime he his very first joke is about Hot Pockets right Hot Pockets and we like we laugh because that's it, it's hilarious and then anytime he bombs a joke He'll go back to the spot where he said hot pockets and say hot pockets and get the crowd back. <laughs> so as he's testing his material, he'll, he'll like, oh, that one sucked. All right, hot pockets. I'm like, oh, okay, we're back again. He's got like 8 million kids too, doesn't he? What's that? Isn't he like me? He's got 8 million kids? Probably. 
Not as many as here in Utah, but we're close. Yeah, Jim Gaffigan, I think he's got like five, something like that. Yeah, well, I'm the oldest of seven, so he's got nothing on us. As Utah people, we got lots of kiddos. Heck, I have oh, almost that many. I have four. So. He has. Oh, here we go. I'm trying to think of something funny yet absolutely non-offensive to say about people with lots of kids. You can say whatever you I told want. You I drink too if, much. If anybody like gets offended, that's their problem, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be honest. I mean, nobody can offend me because I don't give you that power. I don't care about you enough. Sorry, Samuel. Oh, Sorry. no, all right. That's the thing is, is we give power to people to make us feel bad. They say, well, they made me feel this. I'm like, how did they? How did they make you do that? Did they point a gun to your head and say, you feel bad right now? Or did we just say, oh, their words have that much power to affect more than myself? See, I don't, I don't understand that concept of someone making me feel something. Because it's like, you know what? I don't like the way that feels. <laughs> it goes back to what I say, like, you know, in the morning I talk about letting people steal your joy. You know, when you're in a good mood and someone wants to take that good mood away from you, you know, we let them do that. Like, you know, we let people Some make do, until sideways. you finally say, you know what? Yeah, you're not I'm, taking I'm it. I'm going to FYE that and yeah. we're done. I don't, I don't, need, I don't yeah. need to listen to you. If you want to live in your little pouty, pouty, Karen world, do it. Me, myself, I'm going to find the joy, the happiness, and the fun and live in the life of excitement and, and just play because life is meant to be enjoyed. Breathe and roll, man. Breathe and roll. That's my, my statement the other day. Take a deep breath and let that shit roll off because it's not worth getting excited about. Well, And if you can't, go ahead and go in the other room because I don't need that in here. Yeah. Take your energy somewhere else. I mean, I have a mentor that every morning, he lives in Vegas and he goes and he drives to work, right? And he checks himself. And so he waves to people. And you know in Vegas they're really friendly, so they give him the Vegas salute, right? <laughs> the one finger the one finger salute. And he's like, okay, so what do I need to change inside of myself to manifest positivity, right? So he works on the, his inside. Because when you get someone who's negative, you're attracting that at some level. If you want to get really deep into everybody that you meet and the things that you see in them is really you manifesting it out. Because Nobody is anybody else. It's all our perception of what that person is manifesting right now. Because have you ever, it, this is a fun one, have you ever had someone that really screwed you over, right? And the next person you meet with that name, you instantly judge them based on the person. Parents. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that person, but because you had a bad experience, you put that judgment and you put that perception on that person. Like Jessica's, it's really tough. It's, until I met Jessica Dennehy, and then I'm like, there are amazing Jessicas out there. Holy She's shit. She's the best. Right. That's the thing. But before that, I had a negative judgment about it because I had two or three that I had bad experiences with. And I, it's like, I always thought you were the bastard that was trying to kill the roadrunner. I never liked you, dude. <laughs> I've already caught a roadrunner. I've done it. <laughs> Live. I'm serious. I caught an actual roadrunner. So I am one who's actually done that stuff. I don't buy from Acme. That's the, that's the yeah. problem. I learned from my mistakes. I get what you mean about the connotations, though. You do. Right. You, you well, tie, the thing about it is, is everything to... you see in somebody totally. else is really just you manifesting your negativity or whatever it is that you attract. Now, it's difficult for us to accept that because, let's be honest, nobody wants to think that you're manifesting negativity into your life. But when you look at someone, whatever you see, positive and negative, is what's inside of you. I say every, so, every morning wake up, right? And we can choose to be positive. We can choose to be negative. It's just absolutely. a mindset. It's the same energy. It's just the positive side or the negative side. Don't just, which side okay. do we pick? And the more positive we the put two out, wolves, right? the more we attract. The two wolves. It, right? We attract positive, though. The more, in in my world, and, and since I've started Apex, we started this journey, and I'm kind of on this little positivity run, and I'm doing my, my speeches in the morning, and Sam shows up in my life, or you show up in my life. All these great people, positive influence people show up in my life. And the negative people are kind of dropping out, and or they're starting to convert. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I got a see lot of people funny, reaching dude. out. You know, it's wild. Like, I see a lot of people from the old days back at the bar and all that other stuff. And you know, you get caught up in the minutiae of actually doing what we do, um, because you know, I, as well as a podcast, I've got a real estate company, I've got a media company. There's a lot of company shit goes on all the time, and you feel like maybe sometimes you're a little bit stuck, not progressing as fast as you want. Maybe there's there's a few things you'd like to get a bit better at, and then you fucking turn around and look behind you. You're like, damn, I come a long way. Yeah, right. You know, you don't realize just how far you come when you switch friend groups, and yeah, you, know, you can be mediocre 
like in our rooms i feel mediocre and then i remember to look around it's because everybody in the fucking room wakes up and pissed his excellence in the morning yes. like ah i'm mediocre <laughs> in a room full of winners all right i'll yes. take it <laughs> right you know, yeah, yeah. May, you know may my happiness and joy manifest your demons and keep you away from me because there are a lot of people that joy and happiness manifest their demons and they can't they get triggered by it it's like okay well, you can stay away you don't want to be near me anyway, and I don't need your negativity. The negative people stay with the negative. The positive stay with the positive. That's why Apex is such an amazing group of individuals because oh, we're celebrating it. people's wins. Yeah. We're cheering everybody on, and we're like, oh, that's possible? Oh, my goodness, that's amazing. How do you do that? Yeah. Instead of, man, you've got so much stuff. You, you must have cheated. You must have got the hat codes. You must have done this. And it's yeah. like, it it's instead like of asking for the though. cheat codes... It is like, like a cheat code. That's is. how I felt when I discovered this shit. It's yeah. like, wait a minute. This is, is, this, yeah. is this real? Like, and we're willing to teach it to you. We'll <laughs> share you all our cheat codes because we care about each other. One Nobody does the fucking work, though. So it well, doesn't matter. Like, like, in Apex, you know, a lot of people in the world reach out to take from you. In Apex, they reach out to pull you along for the ride. You know, it's a, it's a whole different reach. It's, it's way better. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, 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 would, I would challenge that. They won't pull you. They'll give you the information. You yeah. have to run with it. Yes. I, I won't pull you. They'll I'll be a lighthouse of, ama you. of amazingness, but you have to do the work. You have to take the actions. Yeah. Well, you see the now, fire. You know, fire starts fire is my tag. That's, uh, you yeah. know, you see the fire in people, and it just gives you the fire to go. You know, I see yeah, Sam doing right. something. Lights I'm on it. Up. Like, you know, I'm like, shit, I better get moving. Look what Sam's doing, right. you know, and <laughs> look what Wiley's doing. And I feel like a slacker. I, I better I better get moving, you know. I've been slacking the last couple of weeks. Um you know, some of y'all know, some of y'all don't. I haven't talked about it or addressed it yet on the podcast. Um, I was feeling really, really tired and stuck a lot. I ended up having to go and get blood work done and the old check engine light was on. So I've been taking some uh, prescription drugs for the last few weeks, trying to get leveled off. And uh, I feel like a slacker because I see you posting stuff all the time, Brian. I see you coming up wildly. I'm like, fuck, I better, better put some content out. And I go back through my content over the last two weeks, three weeks. You can see it just goes off a cliff. When I started on these uh, on these drugs, it just sort of just goes off a cliff in my content. So we could have had some amazing contents if you would have been talking while on those drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on them right now. They're not those kind of drugs. Not on the little blue um, pills, no. No, no. no, no, no. <laughs> four, hours, four hours. Four hours. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what. Number one, if I got an erection lasting longer than four hours, I'm not calling my doctor. I'm calling every single woman that I know. <laughs> like, period. There you go. <laughs> Number two, I did try Viagra once and I just got taller, so I haven't figured that out. <laughs> All right, those are my two Viagra <laughs> jokes. <laughs> but no, my content over the last three weeks has gone off a fucking cliff. Um, every day I wake up and I look at this fucking tattoo that I put on me, and I'm like, God damn it, I got to go back to work again. And I just keep on grinding. I keep on going, keep on grinding it out, and hopefully these drugs will level me off and uh, everything will go a little bit more normal. But, and then, um, then it'll stop being a grind, and you'll just be loving it, and you'll just be like. What more can I do? How much more? I do love it. I do. Um, Let's start putting it out, man. We put it out there. Have like some now. fun with it. Just rock. Because uh, it's hard. We, we won't stop. Live. You know, you These are my stop. thoughts. Uh, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's only so much we can talk about before I end up on fucking vaccines and mandates and rigged <laughs> elections and that stuff. Well, People, what's you the know? problem with that? I can't believe I can't believe we went through all the trouble of rigging our election to end up with this shit. Yeah, I think you do better. <laughs> yeah, we could have rigged it better. <laughs> it's the best you got. All right, all right. Let's not get into politics. We'll get we'll lose. We'll get haters. But <laughs> I, I, I think my favorite is I saw a picture. Uh, what was it yesterday of Joe Biden surrounded by a bunch of kids, and each of the kids had like <laughs> Trump hat. Trump will be back and. Trump shirts and MAGA hats, and he had no clue that he was just surrounded by little Trumpites, and here he is in the middle just grinning. Oh, I'm around kids. Cool. It's really I would just say if uh, if if Andy Frisella and Ed Milet ran for president, I think they'd probably do do a lot better than uh, than any of the guys in there right now. Sean Whalen, Ryan Stuman. Stuman's what? He said 20, 30, 24, something like that. He said he'll run. He's got too much to do right now. He's building, but he's... Steaming for president. Let's get some shirts made up. Well, yeah, he, he's it. planning on it here in, like... He, he mentioned it in one of the podcasts I was listening to, that he's and once he gets his stuff done, he'll run. And that'd be an awesome thing, because he'll have the the Apex 
cult behind him. We're it's such the a, best. It's the best cult I've ever been a part of. Right. No, no kidding. Right. See, that's the thing is, is people think there's a negative connotation with it. I'm like, hmm. tell you what, if you manipulate me to be absolutely magnificent, <laughs> manipulate me all day long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. it's I a manipulate cult. my kids every day. Why? Because I want them to do the stuff that gets some results. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a I'll cult of you, I'll do whatever. You get the result. Let's get her done. You inspire no. me to do what I'm doing every day. It's uh, really? yeah, this cult you can never be part of. Honestly, I look at my life from. I mean, I joined Apex the week the, the entire planet shut down, and I don't think I would have made it through um, that whole COVID thing. I mean, we lost as a company. My real estate company made money last year. My media company lost a significant amount of money. And I kept it afloat and I kept payroll paid through selling real estate. But if it wasn't for Apex giving me a framework to cling on to and to set shit up and to just, I mean, I dove headfirst into building that machine and I started doing Facebook lives every day and I started building groups. And like, if it wasn't for Apex, I would probably have been fucked. You would have, you been descended, you would have descended into the madness that was COVID. Hmm. See, I was in the middle of that until I got brought out at the Lion's Den Live in May. And then there's this Ryan Stoom that gets on stage and says a prayer inside of this thing. And I'm like, what kind of voodoo did you put into there? Because two weeks later, here I am in Apex. And it's like, <laughs> whoa! The quality of people in those, the Lions Not Sheep and the Apex group are just insane. And it's getting around the right people that creates that movement. It's like, I want to be the small fish in that large pond 100%. so that I can grow quantum leaps 100%. and be around that kind of stuff. That's why I'm looking... I'm eyeing executives like a. It's like, oh. <laughs> I just need to hit this criteria. I'm there. I'm there. I'm so yeah. right there. Yep. Me too, buddy. Me too. Yeah, that's and it's out. just the plan. You know, it it it's it's making that jump. It's because you're not you're not going to jump in and then jump back out again. You're in. You're in. So. Yeah, yeah. So well, I I, I I I jumped in. I got to see one of their meetings. And then they they told me a couple of things that I have to work on. I'm like, all right, so I'm here working on them. I'll be back in next month. That's my goal. We we snuck into one. Yes. Me and Brian snuck, we snuck <laughs> into one. Snuck into one. See, I got invited. See, I actually, uh, no, we, no, Danny see, invited I us. That's the it. Wristband, Apex executive, right there. Oh uh, no, da- Danny Danny invited us. We we did sneak in though. <laughs> um, but, actually, we said, uh, Danny, can I you ask him how do I get in? in and and like, hey, pretend it's your like, fault. And he's like, you can get me fired and. What were you like anyway? we're like you've been fired before, mate. Fired it's the worst. It it's like don't tell anyone, and here we are talking about it here live. Yeah, yeah. In the it's Apex right. Entourage. It, there we go. But, yeah, we're not telling family, anybody. No family secrets here. Nope, nothing, nothing. We no, don't it's anything. just it's something to aim for, though. It's something to shoot for. Because when I first joined Apex, like I was scared to even open my mouth. I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like the imposter. I felt like the littlest guy in the fucking room. I felt like. Every single person in that room had their shit together, and I was the only one that was failing. And then all of a sudden, it turns out you're not, and it turns out that 80% of the people in the room, especially at entourage level, not so much at entrepreneur level and almost definitely not executive level, but at entourage level, a lot of people are failing. you got that 80-20 split. You've got a lot of people struggling. And I was afraid to even stick up my hand at the first event I ever went to and I was afraid to meet people and I'm like, shit, I don't belong here. Everybody's got their shit together. Everybody's wearing a black t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> nobody's right. fat. I'm like, but what shit. I saw was that everybody wasn't always there. Everybody was where we are now and have been. Everyone's had their issues with mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Whatever, but you realize that were, no one's had the perfect the, trajectory until possibly. you realize what nobody's had that perfect trajectory yeah. you realize that on the third event though like the, the second or the third time you go and you start opening up and people like, wow, start talking to you and talking back i guess like i you did and it I, wrong Brian. yeah regular people yeah. did it wrong I, I joined and pretended i was a toddler just saying here i want to be a part of everything oh you got good candy i want to be over there oh yeah. man that's awesome i love that information <laughs> i just went in there with that full i'm all in and i I'm didn't here. man well, I, 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 I figured, well, I got challenged at that Lions End Live to say, are you all in? And I'm like, no. And that was the huge epiphany. Ooh, I mean, my life yeah. sucked up to that point. Hmm. I was depressed, had just gone through a divorce, all that stuff. And I was just like, well, what do I got to lose? The worst thing that they're going to do is tell me, shut up. That's the worst that they can, or kick me out, right? Or make you play Chubby Bunny. Oh, I yeah. already did Pretty that. Bad. <laughs> I did that. That I was got the worst chubby, thing. Chubby bunny, yeah. uh-uh. and I popped balloons with my butt, and I got up there and I was dancing like a madman at the entrepreneur event. <laughs> the thing about it is, is 
when you don't care what anybody else thinks as far as personality, it's like, I'm free as a, I'll do whatever it takes to get the result. If I can get the result and I'm going to have fun doing it, let's go. Yeah. And that's powerful in your head, man. That's powerful. Because if they would have told me you have to grind and, 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 and be upset and depressed to get the result, I'd be like, Ugh. I'm out. Fuck yeah. that. No. Yeah. Because what? there are ways that you can do what they call the grind and still have fun with what you're doing. If you enjoy what you're doing, the grind isn't a grind. No, absolutely not. If you're up there on stage drumming away, there's no grind there. It's like, uh, man, I am loving this, and this is what I'm doing, and it's like, this is mm -hmm. my jam. That's and how I get with work, though, dude. Yeah. That's how I get in my, my shit when I'm making videos, when I'm... When you're you know, in your flow state. When I'm in my groove, yeah, I fucking love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Like, But like, my joy has changed over the last 18 months. I was all about selling real estate. I love to do it, and I, I, I still do. But my joy comes more now from sharing the things I've learned and helping other entrepreneurs and stepping into this role that I, I didn't create small business surgeon to become a consultant. I created it to talk about small business. That's what I love to do. And then I just got into this role. And now my joy has changed from, um, I, I still enjoy selling houses, but like I enjoy helping clients so much more. It's, it's way more fun. So like, Really, the only times it feels like a grind is when I'm doing like paperwork on the real estate side that Brian knows all about that. It's the only time it feels like a grind. Anytime I'm with clients, like my day flies by. I'll look up and it'll be 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the evening and I just do the clients all day. Um, and it, it, it really is the most fun. But you know, when you get out there and man, you start helping, it's like this this we ride thing. I never expected this to be I thought I was riding my bike and it became something and now I got people following me, I got people messaging me, I got people that are reaching out to me, thanking me for inspiring them, thanking me for you know, leading an example of, you know, where they can be and should be and I'm like, Wow, like this is like something real here. That's wasn't what I expected and I'm really enjoying the, the helping people part of it. Um, it goes back to the real estate side of it, like you said, the helping people part of it. And, you know, it's fun to help people. You know, I was doing AutoCAD drawings. I wanted to poke my eyes out sitting at a computer. And now I yeah. get to help people doing real estate, I get to help people just inspiring them along their life journey and uh, helping them get unstuck. And, you know, we've all hit this wall in our that, lives. That's and, why That's why you, you don't need... Uh... That's why you don't need ads. I don't think you need a traffic funnel. You need you need a you need something to capture. Well, your, once your, once your you're leads, but yeah, like what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. All my leads are into, all just spear yeah, of into, just people right. Know. Just lean into that because the the thing is right when you run paid ads. And sorry, why do we get off track here, mate? When you oh. run paid when you run paid ads, you never ever ever get that strength of connection that you mm. get with a personal referral. I love like, that, like I really well, care about my clients and like that. Well, you can what, you can make you can great make great money in real estate, churning ads and getting leads and setting up concierge to follow up with the leads and do all that stuff. You can make great money, but it's a headache that's not going to bring you your ideal client. Your no. ideal client is going to come from sure. the guys that watch your videos and the guys that sell you. I mean, I, uh, sorry, the guys that send you people. So I wouldn't spend a bunch of money rule, on paid stuff. Twenty rule, you're twenty percent yeah. of people. There you go. There you go. The open house I did today was twice now. So a friend of mine's uh, uh, an elder attorney, and um, you know he deals with estates and you know people getting older need to sell their properties. And now two times now he called me up and said, "Hey, listen, I got this house, and uh, there are people looking to sell it. And they're offering them three hundred for this house. What do you think?" I look at the house and I go, "That house is worth four hundred all day long. Why do you offer them three hundred? So the real estate agent came in and said, "Oh, this house isn't, you know, isn't that great to sell? And you know, I'll just give you three hundred thousand for it, and you know, we don't have to put it on the market." So they were basically robbing them out of a hundred grand. So I put the house on the market. I got a hundred thousand more than they had been offered. So he goes, I got another one. Uh, I got this house today. Um, they were offered two hundred thousand for this house. I'm over three fifty on it already, and I'm doing best and final by tomorrow night. I mean, they were robbing this lady. It's an older lady. She's in a nursing home, and they were robbing her of a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. A real estate agent coming in telling her. Listen, there's nothing you can do with this house. We'll just give you 200 to get out of it. You can use our attorney. You know, we'll help you with everything. This whole game. Yeah, let's hush hush like, it. Yeah, but how like, many times does that? How many times does that it makes work? Me crazy. Man. It's just making. God, me that's crazy. awful. Well, it works every time that someone doesn't know somebody else. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. So, if you don't have a network, if you don't have someone looking out for you, it happens all the time. So, I mean, I'm working a, I'm working a deal for a buddy right now, and it's a, it's a commercial deal, but he came to me. He's like. He had an offer of 
850 and he said is this, is this a good offer i'm like well you know <laughs> we, we ran the numbers i'm like no it really needs to be for about 1.45 somewhere in there and the the first guy that made the offer blew him up and now we're going to sell the whole thing for uh, 1.45 and you know over the first guy coming in trying to make somebody believe it's not worth it's not uh, sorry it's not worth what it is um, well and, and it, here, that's property but think about how many people tear people down so that they feel better about themselves same oh idea. yeah same idea we yeah. do even worse to, to human beings than we do about properties and well, let's get on that's why being around apex is so refreshing is it's like we don't get that here we're just like dude you got this i believe in you you've got some stuff. i've been through stuff too let's let's go you're amazing and apex just having is, it's that crazy like that yeah lips the switch in people and says holy oh i got this yeah. and that's why being around the right people changes lives and it's there's there's no more powerful thing than being around a group of individuals that are a tribe mentality to build each other up there's n there's i wish i had thought of it first <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't ever see me. To, to have thought of it first, you would have had to go back. I mean, at the very beginning, because we, there's been tribes since the beginning. The, the, the ROI the on this shit, the ROI on it's just like, why would I ever quit? Well, here's the thing who says you can't put together a group that's outside of Apex of building up individuals, too? The model has been set. It's okay to create something in a real estate focused firm or in a media focused firm. I've right. thought about it, but I kind of want to nap at some point. And there's well, a see, so my, you don't want to put in the work. <laughs> if your excuses, come on. <laughs> um, what if I want to do. If you truly want to build it, you'll build it. If you yeah. if you just want to say it, you won't, and that's okay. Here's that's what I'm going to do. The thing is, find your passion, do your joy, and and if just bring people to Apex. Because I am I am going to build a community that helps to enrich people's lives. There that's you what go. I'm going to build. And my last business that the one I, I managed to implode through being drunk all the time was selling supplements and yeah. I treated it like a money business a transactional business not a relational business so when the advertising stopped the cash flow stopped the sales stopped everything mm -hmm. stopped um, I'm gonna do it a lot different this time I'm gonna lay out a blueprint and record it all and put it on small business surgeon so that is that's my passion that's why I'm struggling to get this real estate cleared up and um, you know we're partnering with another brokerage here in town they're gonna help run the living college station brand and I'm gonna help with the marketing and then I'm gonna be able to focus on on my other things that where my passions are you know and you're not struggling anymore because you've made that decision to turn it over just Oh, I know. It's just taking forever. <laughs> well. And then somebody else will call me like, hey, can you, can you help with this? I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. Send it over. So you say so, no. Yeah. It's okay to say no. I like the money. Um, <laughs> and well, who says once, you won't get many in your group? I, I, I will. Exactly. I will. But the, that's transitions just. Transitions is always tough. You know, it's uh, it, giving up it, one it to is, start the other and, you know, until one takes over and pulls the weight of the it, first one and. It's taken longer than I've wanted it to, but I think I'm on about 25% of my time in real estate now. So that's good. But like when you turn to content, it's like, well, I want to make a podcast and then you got to make podcasts and you got to cut shit up for TikTok and then bits have to go on YouTube and then some has to go on Facebook. And I, my kid is out this week. Um, so I haven't put up my, I forgot to put up my podcast post today for my, my new episode that went out this morning. You know, it's just little stuff like that. Um, it's 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 getting to grips with learning to manage it and systematize it and set it all up. Now, ordinarily, he, he's at work every day, so there's no problem. Yeah. But he was out today, so the shit didn't get done because I had no, um, I had no operating procedure in place. It's just his job to distribute through all the channels. Well, he shit, is. he's out. Nothing gets distributed. So that's just that's that's learning how to run a business, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, it's big commitments that we make to this stuff. You know, like every Monday we uh, jump on here now. Every morning I got to get up and ride my bike. You know, every how many every times do you feel like skipping that? <laughs> every morning, <laughs> no. it is an accountability thing. It's like I, I'm letting people down. Got to do it. There's no way I'm going to We talk about like, this when I did 75 hard. I did it on Facebook. Why? Because I wasn't going to fail in public. You know, so this is the nice. same thing. You know, it's it's at 6 a.m. I'm up and I'm riding, and sometimes there's people in my driveway waiting for me. Lately, there's been a less and less. Though tomorrow is Tuesday, uh, Father Eugene will be riding with me. 
I can always count on him Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But um, in the beginning, when I first started this, everyone thought it was fun. And I had like, you know, sometimes we'd have six people riding. And lately it's been, you know, two, you know. But uh, whatever. It doesn't matter because it makes me get out of bed. I know when that alarm goes off. And I, we talked about it the other day. I get up before the alarm now, which is something I never got up before the alarm. I would hit snooze 16 times because, you know, I want to get out. And I, I'm enjoying life now. Like, I want to start the day. Like, I get up. I look at the clock and I'm like, you know, it's 5.45. I got the alarm set, like 5.30, 5.35. I'm looking at it going, is it time to get up yet? Come on, let's go. I want to start you are day. literally, like you and Drewby are the first things I see when I open my Facebook every single day. Fucking Brian and Drewby. Yeah, we get out there. We throw a message out. You know, I got my regulars now that, that come and say good morning every morning and reach out and message me and tell me what's going on in their lives. And it's just fun. It's just, you know, and it's... And, you know, it's positive self-talk, right? So when I'm speaking my message, a lot of the shit I'm talking about is shit I'm working on in my own life and speaking it in. You know, I listen to my, my message back on a ride home to see, like, what did I say? Because, you know, when you're in the moment, a lot of times you don't realize what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if you guys yeah. feel that. You know, like, when you're in the moment, you kind of read back. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's what I said. I'm not, I wasn't really sure. Well, you know, what, like, what does the universe want me to speak out today? What truths And that's really what it comes out. It comes out of my gut. Like, I, I wake up, and I don't – it's not scripted. It's not – it's what am I feeling? You know, I throw on a couple of podcasts. Sometimes, you know, Sam will come on. I'll hear something he says. Or, you know, Ryan or like I, said, I listen to Joel Osteen a lot and Victoria Osteen, you know, a little uh, spiritual journey. And a lot of the stuff, it all aligns. It's just – I'll listen to something Ryan says, and I'll listen to something Joel Osteen says, and it's the same message. And I'm like, wow, there's like, you know, two opposite. I needed to know that like, today. You know, it's Sweet. Like, it's like, all right, so this that, is the message. That Let's does do happen. This. Yeah. You know? it's yeah. Like, it just, and then like I'll scroll through a post and I'll see something Sam posted and I'm like, that's the message that was in my head. I'm going about, about to talk about it. Just, it's crazy how the world aligns. I really think there's like a, like a vibration of that we all sync together when we're on the same mindset. And uh, yep. as you scroll through your, your, your feed once you get involved with you know positive people like the thought of the day is multiple people's thoughts of the day anthony hudson i follow a lot he's a great dude he does live all the time yep. and a lot of stuff he posts i'm like wow like we're, we're sharing a brain today you know it's like uh that's you were thinking in what i was thinking and i uh, mind it's awesome it's fun it's really fun to just be aligning with people it's just neat well that's that's what happens when your frequency is actually tuned to what you want and you've started manifesting out hey this is what i want attracted into my life and it's like okay here you go boom 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 keep, boom and more people just keep coming in and it's just uh you know the more people i talk to in our groups and i was talking my 30-day challenge to try and get intentional with 30 people you know for 30 days take one person a day and just talk to them someone out of your norm an old friend maybe a new friend maybe someone stop talk to them and learn what they're about be intentional with just a random person you know not someone you would talk to and you find out because I swear God puts people in our lives for a reason. And you'll talk to someone and they'll share something that you're like, wow, that was deep. I never knew that about you or or I just met you and you're on the same journey I'm on. And I mean, it's just, just stop and talk to people. Like I tell everyone, just do it for 30 days. Just find someone random and talk to them. Spend 15 minutes and, and get deep with them. I was talking to an appraiser on a, on a uh, house I just went to the other day and I rode up on my bike and I was 10 minutes late because we rode across town and I was hitting the lights coming back and I'm like, you know, she met me at seven. You're on a bike, dude. Lights, lights don't apply when you're on a bike. Just oh, right through them. When you're crossing like a six-lane highway, you got to stop. You know. You but, just got to grow some. Yeah, yeah. I know. I do. I try. I usually get the people I'm with run over though. But uh, uh-huh. yeah, some dodging cars. If he's by himself, he'd run through it like a yeah, courier yeah. in New York. If I kill Father Eugene, uh, you know, it won't be good. You know. So uh, we got to keep him safe. So I got to stop for the lights. But um, yeah, so I show up at this appraisal. I'm ten minutes late. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. She met me at 7 o'clock in the morning because, like, I'm like, I got to get this done. She's like, I can meet you at 7. I game, let's do it. On. So 7.10, I'm rolling up. And I'm kind of like, I'm sorry. And she's got this big grin. And I go, what? And she goes, that is so cool that you rode up on your bike. And I go, yeah, I do it every morning. I started telling about the story. And she starts telling me how she used to ride. And she was a little overweight. And, you know, she's been fighting the battle that we all fight. And... Um, she needs to get riding again. And I spent about 15 minutes just talking to her about life and about real estate. And, and she's like, I'm going to go home tonight and get on my bike. And I'm like, there's a random person I spoke to today that I just inspired her to get out and get her ass moving and get back in shape and start riding her bike. She goes, I love riding my bike. And I just stopped and I got to do it again. 6 a.m. Here I am. Let's go. You know, so it's like, Dude, no, I, get, I get pictures of coffee from all over the place. I think you sent me one even like yeah, yeah, people just send pictures uh, of coffee or like, morning, from uh, Glen hey, Falls, I'm, New York. I'm, I'm, I'm out walking. I'm out walking my dog. You know, um, I, you made me go out and shit. It's like it's so rewarding. It's 
just like to feel that shit and to have a positive influence and a positive impact on other people's lives. That's um, why I do what I do. You know, Wiley. We've all been stuck. I mean, we've all been stuck, and it's nice to get people unstuck. I know me and Sam have uh -huh. a very similar story. Uh, Wiley, I'm learning more about you, but, you know, we get points in our lives where we were just stuck and just, like, just existing and a hamster in a wheel running and running and not get anywhere. And it's like, we got to break that cycle. And then when you can help people break the cycle and help them start living life again, it's just... It's awesome. And it's not even about money. It's not about anything. It's just about having fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point, right? That's why we're doing well, it. Amen. The cool thing about it is, is when you help somebody else, you're really helping yourself. You are. Because you're manifesting the people in there that you need help with. It's like, oh my goodness, I just learned something from what there's... Oh, I everybody, everybody I help, I'm just like, wow, that's for me. Thank you. Yeah, every time I get I paid to solve my own stuff. It's amazing. Every time I coach someone from my team on real estate and we start talking, and I start talking about, all right, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm in my head, I'm going, you're right. I need to do this. I need to do that. You know what <laughs> exactly. I mean? It's like stuff I do, but I'm not, maybe I start, you know, getting a little lazy with it. I wasn't as intentional with it. And I'm like, and I bring this, you know, Apex stuff up to my, to my real estate team and I start inspiring them with that type of stuff. And like you said, not, it's not for everybody. Some people are like, hey, hey whatever, whatever. And the people that are engaging, that are living the life that I'm showing them how to live, they're killing it killing it they're seeing their sale after sale after this i just got a new listing i just got a new buyer it's got this why because uh relationships over transactions uh, you know i, I mm -hmm. call my real estate uh you know real estate built on relationships because it's all about the relationships we have with people that that makes people want to work with us like you said you talk about the funnels you, you can't get a relationship through a funnel you know no. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's you get a relationship by touching people in the world and then you know what when they think about doing real estate they think about doing life or whatever they need in life you know they reach out to you and, uh, you know, I don't, don't even ask for it. I kind of just, that's part of my journey of helping people. You know, do you do, I, that's, that's how it is over here, man. Do you do buyer's yeah, broker's get... agreements there in Texas? That's something you do where you, where you sign a basic contract to represent the buyer and mm -hmm. you get paid. So, yeah, it's like they do it up here, but I don't do that because, you know, we get paid, you know, from the seller side, basically, you know, I don't know how that works up there. So. If a, if a property is listed for a certain percentage, this percentage is split between the buyer's yeah. agent and the seller's yeah. agent, right? So it's right, but you, you, yeah, but we have a buyer rep agreement that that you know ties it, it binds us to the buyer and that gives. Uh, then we we become a fiduciary for the buyer, and, yes, but yes, we same. we are paid by the seller's it's broker. Okay, yeah, so same as same yeah. up here, yeah, same. Yeah, same the buyer doesn't pay us. The buyer doesn't pay, yeah, but you're but you're you're tied to the buyer. Yeah, um, but what that does is that buyer theoretically, if they go buy a house through someone else, they theoretically owe you. A commission if they you know they're locked into you theoretically so, theoretically yeah. yeah right so they pushed that in, in real estate school up here to, to get this and i said you know what I, I don't need that agreement i have the relationship bond you know if i'm really out to help someone and i'm really pushing them in the right direction we don't need a signed agreement we have we have the handshake you know and it still means something these days when your word means something so let's circle back to wiley for a minute um because I want to ask him a couple more questions before we run out what? of time. Questions? No. I, question. Wiley, you can't be on a podcast and not get asked questions, mate. Sure you can. No, dude. <laughs> it's possible. Wanna... Not not very good podcast, but it's possible. Wait till you come on mine, buddy. I'm going to grill you. Um, I'm, but... I'm good with that. <laughs> you can grill me. Are we going for dinner or this week down in Texas? We're going Damn to uh, <laughs> <want this? laughs> Juicy Sack friends? Club. <laughs> Where are we going? I declare. Right, right. We didn't talk about the. Uh, is that the, is that the question you want to ask? I think Samuel's yeah. like no. They wanted a real question, but uh, I'm going to be coming in hot Thursday morning. I'm not coming up Wednesday night. I'll be coming in hot Thursday morning. I will be there about eight thirty for coffee and to get a cool. desk at the front of the classroom. Um, I don't know. If I, how do I ask a serious question now after <laughs> fucking with you guys for the last twenty minutes? <laughs> You're not having fun. What's the point, right? <laughs> I am having fun, Wiley. I want to know this, buddy. I want to know what the best mindset hack you can give to an entrepreneur just to get started is what's, what's the first thing you'd lean out and tell them? I'd challenge them on their definition of expert. And this is what I mean by that. A lot yeah. of people get the imposter syndrome, right? And when they're talking to someone, they think that I'm not worthy to talk to this person, whatever. Did you realize that when you're in a conversation with someone, if you know 1% more than the person you're talking to, you are the expert? I mean, I, yeah. You're the, you're that, the that, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So all you have to do is know 1% more than the person you're talking to to become the expert in that conversation. And when you're talking about stuff that you do, there is no way, unless you're talking to another person who's 
falls deep into that that company, that that profession, you're going to know more than that person. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun thing is, is once you start realizing that you really are the expert, that you know more than that person that you're talking to, you are providing that value, it shifts the confidence level to go, oh, yeah, I do know more. Dude, that's so fucking hard, though. It really is. Um, Until it's I, not, it, it's that voice, right? And what if you make that voice sound like Nancy Pelosi? And she's telling you, <laughs> you're not that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, can you take her seriously? Oh, that easy. He's fun, though, isn't he, Brian? He's oh, fun. Yeah, yeah. I think he gets in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I talk about, I mean, like, so you walk into a room, say, 20 people, right? That could be 10 of them could be millionaires, 10 of them could be, you know, hundredaires. Like, you know, but money point, means nothing when it comes to what you're doing. No one knows who's who when you walk into a new room, right? So we have this imposter syndrome yeah. that this guy's well, worth a billion, this guy's worth a million. I can't talk to him, not worthy. They don't know that you're not worth a billion or a million. So if you just walk in and talk to him like a normal human, there's the imposter syndrome drops out. It's like I've, I've been here, here, here's my question. People like, and you get to have a conversation, and they don't know that I'm like six kids and like you know. Even if they knew, here's here's my question to you: If you were worth a billion dollars and someone came up and talked to you confidently and just had a conversation with you, that would be like the greatest thing ever because so many people have that imposter syndrome, right? That that fear, and nobody wants to talk to you. It's kind of like in the movie. What is it? Uh, Back to the Future. No. Terminator 2. No, it's the, the night 51st one. 51st day. The We Will Rock You. I haven't seen that one. American Pie. It's got Heath Ledger in it. as the, the Oh, the, A Knight's Tale. Knight's Tale, right? Is that right? Or was that Richard Gere in that one? No, no, that was... No, right? Knight's Tale was... Yeah, Heath Ledger. And the thing about but, it is, is he built up his aura of who he was, and nobody questioned it. Mm until some guy exposed it right but the king right. the king right everybody knew that he was the, the the crown prince and had never lost a battle and everyone was holding to him right until he said no he's here risking his life he wants to do this and the look on the that, that king's eye the knight's eye that said he's really gonna come at me this is the most exciting thing ever someone is actually challenging me i love this the feeling of that connection and that desire right we put people on pedestals not realizing that when we put them on pedestals, the energy, they don't get that same ability to get the connection until they, you start saying, you know what, they're just a human being too. And when they want to be treated as a human being, and then they can, their eyes light up when you start conversing with them and having that conversation and actually having a dialogue because they're just like, Wow, you've had the balls to come and talk to me? No one's had done that in a while. Let's well, it's like that. Um, it's like that Leonard Skinner song. Uh, where, where he's complaining about the people coming up to him and talking about music. It's like, you want to talk about fishing? I'm down. Right. Like, like connect, connect on a different level. Don't be, exactly. don't be imposed. Say, hey, you're a billionaire. How did you become a bit? No. Oh. Like, Dude, what did you, what, what, what are some of your things that you enjoy? Yeah. Ask the questions and find their passions. And if they bring up their business, cool, ask questions. But the biggest thing you can do, it's, if you're with someone like that, is realize that you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Mm. Use them proportionally. Yeah, it's true in everything in life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just use, use it. it pro use it proportionally. I always like to find common ground with no, ma no matter who I am with. You know, whether it's walk up and hit them with a couple of questions and, and find out what they're about. And once they start opening up about what they like, where they're from, you know, what they do. Then you start going down that road. If you have similar, you know, hey, listen, I ride my bike. Oh, you ride your bike too? You know how many people ride their bike that don't talk about it? And I start talking to them about my bike ride, and they go, oh, I ride too. I go here, I ride there, and all of a sudden we have a bond, and we ride bikes together. Now we're talking about riding bikes together. You know, you could be a millionaire, but you still want to come ride a bike with me one day. Like, hey, let's go ride down by the beach. You want to, this Saturday, let's go for a ride. Because we have a common ground. It's outside of the business world. It's just people world. And we're all the same people. Like, you know, we get intimidated by, you know, like I said, successful people. And, and we self-doubt and we talk ourselves out of it. But I think uh, when you can make a common bond with someone that, that has just a life bond, you know, whatever. I like to go fishing. I like to go golfing. I like to, whatever I, you like to do that's non-business related. Now we can talk on that level. Now I can be the expert on that level, possibly. And, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and now, all right, so now this millionaire person is talk, coming to you, just think, wants to know what you have to say. 
you know, and maybe you're going to inspire them to do something that, um, you know, that they wouldn't have done before. And now you're adding value to their life, just like, you know, they could add business value to your life. Um, but it's, uh, you know, we need to like, just don't doubt each other. Just realize we're all human. We're all the same people. We all have had the same struggles. We all, you know what, you know, we still have, you know, whether you're a millionaire or not, you still have kids that you want, you know, that are cranky that you want to play in their video games and teenagers in the house and all this other stuff that we all deal with in life. You know, we're all on the same journey. It's just, you know, maybe different levels of, uh, of the, uh, you know, Super Mario Brothers or something, you know? Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a trip. This is like, it's not even an interview. It's just three guys bullshitting at this point. I Isn't that it. what it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be. Yes, yes, yes. Like With this. a little bit of focus, but... I'll I'll bring you on. Uh, I'll bring I was you on muted I during show. the focus part. Yeah, well, the good party <laughs> muted him. Man. We were just bringing. It's like we don't want to really hear him. We're gonna make him think that he's talking to people, but we're gonna mute his mic so that no one knows what he's actually saying, and they'll be like, "I need a, I need subtitles. I need." I need you subtitles. want to know what really happened? <laughs> My kid has this dream to be a youtuber and make these videos so he was set up today with my mic and my camera screen recording video games at 10 years old awesome. doing his own commentary and making video games for his youtube channel and <clears throat> however he did it he managed to hit whatever default resets on my audio sentence and i had to go back in and rebuild the one specifically for this um but I love him and he gets to use my computer and he gets to record his videos and he's got his own little YouTube channel. And when he's ready to launch it, I'm going to send everybody from apex to hit subscribe and follow him and, and uh, help him out. Cause he's, you got you know. my, you got my subscription and like, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I love encouraging him. I tell you, he hit me, he hit me up the other day, the little fucker, right? I've got him. I picked this up from apex, give him money to, to do book reports. So at first oh, yeah. he was just, uh, he was just doing book reports on whatever. And then um, I got Drewby's book, Crush the Day, just sitting on the desk there. I'm like, oi, read this one. So he reads it. He does a book report. And uh, I shoot, a, I shoot a, a, a message to Drewby. And because, uh, you know, I've, I've interacted a lot more with Drewby than I have with, with Ryan. And so I shut it over to Drewby and he immediately texts back and ends up making a video for William. They end up video chatting each other back and forth awesome. and william's like man this is the best day of my life ever i love it so i put him on business books and then anyway he read one of ryan's and i sent the same thing to ryan and well fuck me ryan sent a video back and ryan's like hey william <laughs> you know just awesome. so now the kid's just grinning while he turns to me the other day he's like dad this isn't the best use of my time I'm like mm, which book did you just read <laughs> that's awesome so Probably he wants Thomas to sell Keenan's. dude he wants to sell real estate and get paid a commission of the real estate that he sells that I'm listing. And I'm like, Psh, go for it. And so <laughs> he started doing Facebook lives on my real estate channel with, it used to be Samuel's virtual tours. And now it's just Williams virtual tours. He did his first one the other day. And uh, it's viral though, you know, that's, that's stuff still yeah, viral. And, and I'm going to pay the kid. I'm going to pay him. He can have a percent commission. If he wants to go do virtual tours every day, I'll send him out because he figures he can get this gaming computer so much quicker. And I just, I started paying him $20 a book report and, you know, four fucking business books later and he's hustling me for a commission only sales job. I'm like, okay. I, you imagine I, I couldn't be more proud. That, that, How far ahead representing what winning looks like right there. Yeah. I can be more proud of the kid. I mean, he's just doing great. It's the advantage they got from what we figured out now at I'm oh, 45 Jesus. years old and we're given a 10 years old that you just jumped them up 30 years in their life to start learning this stuff at that age. Yep. I mean, well, like, he doesn't. He doesn't want to go to school and um his mom his mom agrees because i told him i said look mate never stop educating yourself and never stop learning but once you set up a company and we do over a hundred thousand dollars in revenue you can quit school and we can handle it from homeschooling from then on so now he's just got this amazing drive that he wants to build a company make a hundred grand so he can quit school I'm like, <laughs> oh my i i I've, I've i'm creating a meme right now it's like my bachelor's degree means absolutely nothing. Prove me wrong. Because internships and, and the Apex connection is worth more than that piece of paper. Oh, yeah. Of yeah. Outdated information. It, well, it's, it's almost embarrassing, though, because, like, the levels I move at now, a lot of people are, so where did you get your degree? I'm like, uh, well, I actually don't have one. Uh, <laughs> life, yeah. 
No, actually, yeah. The only reason why you need a degree is if you're like a doctor and they say you have to have one. Other than that, I would say if you know what you want to do, go be an intern at that company or a mm -hmm. company that does that. Get all the insides and they'll either hire you or start your own after you've got that information. Is that a cat? <laughs> <laughs> he just grew ears. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, yeah. I got the, yeah. All right, Brian, we're running up on time, buddy. You got any more questions you want to run by Wiley before we get off this chat, mate? Um, I don't know, Wiley, what do you want to leave us with? What do you want to leave us with? <laughs> Number one point that people can start tomorrow to start changing their lives. What, what's the number one hurdle that you think? People well, I just with? wrote a book last weekend. All right. And my first chapter is know what you want. Decide on what you want. Because you right figure, now, how do you figure that out though? Because I want a giraffe, but yeah. like you no, know, mamas, I do you? Really if you passionately want mamas. it, you'll find a way to get a giraffe. Go <laughs> become a zookeeper, and you'll have a giraffe. I would also have to clean up giraffe poo. That doesn't appeal to me. Well, see, there you go. So you don't really want a giraffe. So how do you figure out what you want? It's 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 really just getting in tune and asking yourself the questions of what are you passionate about? What moves you towards? What really dials you in? Like. The joy that you feel when you're drumming, right? What brings you that? And I go into detail about well, the GoPro guy, right? Mm -hmm. His dream was he wanted to be a snowboarder. That's it. So he strapped a camera to his head and went down the thing with a camera. And all of a sudden, he developed the GoPro to fund his... The thing he wanted most was just to snowboard all the time. Another I dude with the Frisbee. He wanted to be a professional Frisbee dude. He went and he got sponsored and, and tours Europe, tossing frisbee around. You know, I figured it out, Wiley. I yeah. figured it out. I just, I want to play music and I want to own a bar and I want to have a foundation that sets up money and gives it to kids and mm -hmm. looks after and educates kids. And in order to do that, I need to build an eight figure supplement brand. There you go. That's the thing I know to do. So that's, yeah, I just got to sell these houses first, <laughs> you know. That was easy. <laughs> there it is. See, and that's the point, right? See, most people say, I ask them, are you getting everything you want? No. Do you know what you want? No. Well, then how do you know you're not getting everything you want? Because your unconscious is bringing everything to you based on what you've set out there. So until you put out what you really want, your unconscious is just going to bring you random stuff. Start. More people will plan their vacation. Matty K is the best. <laughs> Matt, Matty is, yes. yes. Yeah. Right. Versus more people spend time planning a vacation than planning their life. And yet, what's most important? It. No one will get on a plane without a destination, yet they'll live their life without knowing where they want to go. Sure. So go. just decide where you want to go. And if you, you realize, you know what, this isn't what I want, well, as you're going down the path, pivot and slay, like Jessica Dennehy yeah. says, right? It's okay to move, but you've got to start taking action and just start deciding what you want. Say, oh, that could be awesome. And you get down the path, like, I didn't realize that being a veterinarian meant I had to kill all these animals. Oh, I don't want to do that. And pivot, right? And, and it's just deciding an action and taking that imperfect action and realizing either you want to do it or you don't. Are you filling, filling your bucket? Are you living that dream? Yes, do more. No? Okay, what do I want instead? And by just movement, taking the actions instead of, Aim, 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 yeah. aim, 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 waiting for that perfect moment, which will never come. Just do ready, fire, aim. Yeah. And then just, course correct. I, I was at a mastermind with uh, Sean Whalen on last Thursday, and he had a guy that's earning nine figures. And he's like, I bought, I took some pictures of this product. And I sold this product. I invested 50 grand into it to see if it would sell. Just bought ads, put it out in the market, didn't own the product. And then when the people bought, he refunded them all the money and said, hey, that's a thing that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's now, okay. But this dude owns 60%, 68% of the massage chair market. He sells more massage chairs than Costco. Hmm. He's got 180,000 square foot Thing, and it's all about fail faster, fail faster, fail faster, find what works. He thought he had the golden, perfect opportunity by these Liberty Second Amendment ties, right? He still has three crates of them. 
he thought it was a surefire, done, done, this was the easiest thing, and realized, wait, nope. And he just pivots and says, oh. But he talks about how he's failed more times than he succeeded, but when he succeeds, oh my goodness, the floodgates open because he invests everything into the successes. That's the way to do it, man. The only bad decision is the one you don't make, right? Well, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, there right? What they don't realize is that a lot of us have failed more times than they've even tried, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about all of those things. And, it, and the thing about it is you keep growing and you keep learning. The, I, I, I don't even buy the word failure anymore. I say there's no such thing as failure. It's only feedback. Yeah. What? Just, what, what? Oh, that didn't work. Cool. Let's do something different. Yeah, let's write that down happen. and figure out where to go next. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. True. Use it as a, as a movement to go where you want to go. But yeah, that's my thought is just decide yeah. and take action. All I right. mean, I was reading the Dave Ramsey post. He's like, put out your goal and look at it. And I'm like, is that going to do anything? I'm going to look at it. Not going to take any action, but I'm going to look at it. Yeah, I won't get anything. You've got to take the actions. You've got to take the steps. You've got to break it down to daily activities on how to get exactly where you want to go. Small steps forward daily. I agree. How do you oh, eat an elephant? Yeah. Hold. With friends. Oh. No, with friends, with, friends yeah. with a bunch Absolutely. of friends, invite yeah. your, with a bunch of like-minded people buddies, invite your tribe whose mission it is yeah. to eat and the elephant. Party. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you find the guys on that mission, yeah. you invite them to like eat it that. with you. That's the revised yeah. version of how to eat it. Yeah, I like, I like that. that. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep yeah. that. Or carefully. You eat elephant carefully. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. I got to get out of here. You all can stay and chat, but it's time for me to go. We'll be in our head to get on a plane soon. We'll keep this up. Again for Texas. Yeah. Tomorrow. Was, no, two days. Two days. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday morning. I will see you guys. I will see you guys Thursday. Wiley, thank you for hanging out with us, man. This I will send awesome. you a booking link to my show. I'd like to go a little deeper on small business surgeon. Absolutely. Um, I'm here. And Brian, don't stop writing, man. I love seeing those videos. Right. And uh, maybe I'll catch you for one on Thursday. Should I bring my bike or are you going to be on a. Uh, uh, can you bring two bikes? You got an extra one? No, because I can only ride one at once. Yeah. Like something i gotta i gotta i gotta buy a bike and just leave it in thomas's garage just leave it at thomas's house yeah yeah, yeah. I, thomas I should do bike. that probably not we walk at dawn oh i ride i ride in a hotel no i rode with uh punjan um around the lake uh three times ago and, you know it's um, i joined five months ago and it's my fifth trip i thought it was supposed to go quarterly it's like addictive. Yeah. It's really well, addictive. It's when addictive. you go to the live events, and then when you sneak yeah. into Fly in Friday, that's kind of a different thing, right? Yeah, yeah well, we we did. We yeah. did. Yeah, listen, what happened? Oh, when's, Guilty that, is. when's that podcast Guilty. coming out? Do you know? Is it, did you look in the shuffle? It's got to be soon. Which huh? hours? That's why we were there. We were doing the podcast. Yeah, I need to get it from. Uh, I asked Zach, and he said Thomas had it, and I haven't managed to get a copy of it yet, so I don't know where it is. Um, I actually, uh, I I've got five or six queued up at least, maybe seven, um, but. <laughs> We'll get you on. I just got to find. I got to find the recording of it. Of course, um, I was. That's what happens when you just record so many, and you just. I'm like, I'm sorry, it's in here somewhere in my Rolodex. Yeah. Right here. No, that that one's actually we recorded it at BFA, um, ah. so it's actually up there on their um, on their hard drives. I just got to get a copy of it. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Good. <laughs> I have to Jeez. get out of here. We will see you all next Monday for um, more of this. What are we calling it? Get some fire, fire live. Get some fire. Get some fire live. All right, we'll be Brian back and Sam. Later. No BS. Later, no later. BS. And <laughs> Wiley. Later, Wiley. Wiley. All right, later, guys. All right, guys. See you all. Good stuff. Bye. Have a great night. God bless. All right. <laughs>